Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Uh, apologies for my uh, rather amateur looking setup. I've been having some camera difficulties um, doing all this. But <laughs> regardless of that, because we've got Mr. Professional himself, Tim Mubest. Uh, that's oh. right, over there. How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> uh, uh, welcome. Welcome back to Adobe Live, Tim. Uh, yes, it is. is uh, it's been half an hour already. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's been a minute since you've done one, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's going to be a whole deja vu for today. It's amazing. It's like, I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what are, Joe, what are you showing us today? Uh, well, I'm going to show you your screen uh -huh. you're going to mirror to me and uh, we'll send it back. Uh, we're going to be running through uh, what's been released in Max, if, uh, That's if right. I'm not mistaken. We've yeah. got a full 90 minutes here, um, plenty of people in the chat as well. Uh, if you want to come and join us, by the way, on the chat, then come over to behance.net and uh, we have um, plenty of people here. So good afternoon, good evening uh, to Sandrine, Oliver, Caroline, Susan, Angus. Uh, Reverb Mike, Reverb Mike, Reverb Mike, and uh, Gareth and plenty of other people. Uh, Linda, hello, nice hello. Day. Let us know where you're from. And uh, that's on behance.net uh, forward slash live, uh, forward slash Adobe Live, actually. Um, and right. uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can join in, get some questions over. We're going to have 90 minutes today um, and uh, we'll run through all sorts of updates and everything. Uh, in the capable hands of Tim. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> All right. So, um, yes, welcome, everybody. I'm really excited for this stream. And I hope this one will be also your favorite, too, because it's all about my most favorite apps, which are Photoshop, After Effects, Bridge, and Premiere Pro, <laughs> in that order. Just kidding. Um, yeah, and I will show you a couple of cool things, new things, shiny features, and um, I suppose we'll just jump right in. Otherwise, we won't have enough time at the end of the stream. And we're going to start out in Photoshop. So let's go on over. And I have prepared a couple of images, which I conveniently have closed already <laughs> again. Well done, Tim. Let's try to open that folder once again. There we are. All right. I have prepared a couple of images and videos which we will be using for the stream today. Uh, we have like some videos which you might remember from a past stream. We also have some new ones. And we are going to um, have a quick look at them today in the stream. And I thought we could start with uh, Photoshop because I have it open already. And because I also uh, have found, I've dug up some old scans of old images of my family. Uh, my great uncle, that's him, yeah. in Munich. Very cool. And I thought we could perhaps use some of the new uh, filters in Photoshop to uh, bring back and restore some of uh, the photos that may have lost some fidelity over the years of storage and also in fairness my poor knowledge of scanning photos i think these were scanned like a couple of years ago at least 10 years ago and back in the day i didn't know how to scan photos so um let's try to fix that right <laughs> so let's uh get started i to be fair just... i i still don't know how best to scan photos there's yeah, so many we... different ways and all sorts and but you will see that yeah. this one really is bad. It's, it's not good. And um, I'm going to start with this photo. And let's just have a quick look at what we could fix. First of all, I mean, the resolution isn't great, but we're going to uh, glance by that and um, have a look at the face. I do see it's a bit blurry, perhaps. And what I also see, we do have some dust, some dust specks here and there. And what's even worse, is we have some awful, awful JPEG artifacts because back in the day I was not as smart and I thought, ooh, yes, it's a small file. It doesn't look any different. Let's just make it smaller. Let's compress it. And of course, introducing by compression JPEG artifacts, which you can see by these lovely eight by eight squares, such as this one. And here is a laser line. Well, that's not good. I mean, yeah, hmm. you can see a lot of these. And that's not really the sign of a good photo. 
and perhaps the neural filters, spoiler, 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 can help us with, um, just gonna hide that for the moment, uh, can help us with reducing some of these artifacts. So let's see what we can do. If you don't know, the neural filters are hiding behind the filter menu. You can just open them here. And we go into a um, new workspace. Well, new as in we already had this a couple of years ago, but we do have some new filters for us um, available. I uh, already went ahead and downloaded them all. If you happen to see a cloud icon next to a filter, that means you haven't downloaded that one yet. So just click on that. It will take a second to download. Um, depending on your internet connection, and then you will have it ready. Don't get it confused, however, with the wait list. Those are filters which Adobe is currently, maybe, working on. And you can vote whether you are interested. Like, oh yes, ah, I hadn't noticed that before. I'm, I'm very uh, interested in this. Only, uh, yeah. Shadow regeneration. Ooh, isn't that interesting? Interesting. I wonder if they can fix my uh, my webcam. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I am very interested. And yes, submit. Thank you. We have received your feedback. Nice. There you go. Um, right. But of course, since we want to focus on uh, photo restoration, let's just go right there. We have the new photo restoration filter. And if I hover over that, we got this lovely preview, which quickly explains um, what's happening. But Let's just have a look. So I'm going to flick that on. It's going to take a hot minute to process, or rather a hot second. I do have a considerably fast machine. There's and a, uh, a mention here of cropping that sign with the uh, the nice typography is a crime for the photographer or the, or the scanner. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure actually. this was already cropped. I'm, I don't think this was done by me, although I wouldn't put it past me because I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if it's the, uh, the viewfinder, um, sometimes on an old SLR, they just weren't accurate. You yeah. couldn't actually see where the um, where yeah. the edge of the frame was going to be. The viewfinder was bigger than, or maybe it was on a rangefinder camera, actually. Never know. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> anyway. All right. So um, Photoshop already went ahead and processed the image slightly by using the sliders on the very right, which twirl down, twirl down, twirl that down, <laughs> I can reveal more sliders. So let's have a look at what they do. First of all, Photoshop Sensei uh, is very aware of what's happening on the image. So it's trying to analyze, are there people on it? And if that's the case, then we can maybe use the enhanced face filter yeah. uh, slider to um, specifically improve the looks and faces because if we already know like this is a face then maybe we can tell if there's a scratch like right across it so we can remove it better in this case luckily we don't have have any huge scratches so we probably don't have to uh, use this ladder too much and i also would recommend even though it might be tempting to uh, crank every single one to the max if you do that you will certainly reduce all the texture. And while that's certainly a cool effect, I don't think that's really what we um, are after today. So better be careful, slowly and carefully uh, try that. And what I would like to reduce also um, are the JPEG artifacts, which we just talked about. And I think down here, we already can see, yeah, almost gone if we have a look at before and after. You can mm. see these um, eight by eight squares, they are reduced con like a, a considerable amount, but we can also take this JPEG artifacts reduction slider, which does exactly that, but even better. And we can see how far we can go. And by now I would say they are essentially gone. And if we have a look at before, like we can clearly see those squares. Yeah. And now they're the, gone. And uh, the dust and scratches on the yes those are controlled by a uh, second slider so if we zoom in on one of those or a couple of them i suppose there we go we have one here one there one there we can take the scratch reduction slider and we can crank it all the way just to see what happens hmm. and this will now of course take a moment for photoshop to process that which is by the way happening on device um, so it doesn't mean you need an internet connection. Your photos aren't going anywhere. They're staying on your device. Um, 
So yeah, that's all good. And of course, now they are gone, but I think that at 100% that might be just a bit too much. Although, having said that, you know, actually, <laughs> it did the same thing as it did on the German stream. It removed uh, the nuts and bolts behind. That's not really what we want. I suppose they could be considered, yeah, there you go, a scratch. So maybe 100 <laughs> isn't what we want. <laughs> Maybe somewhere in between. And also, of course, the cool thing about neural filters uh, is we don't have to um, apply them on the same layer if we don't want to. Let's say we want to have them on a separate layer, on a different layer. We can always go ahead and say output, new layer, or maybe even a smart filter. And then we can use masks to selectively bring back some of the details, which otherwise might be lost, like we saw here these details on this window shade I mean, they're gone that's not really what we want so um let's just uh, yeah it, this feels like a filter for uh creating spot the difference artwork <laughs> you, know, you maybe want to do a side by side in a children's magazine uh, there you go yeah not, maybe not, not the intention but thanks she has gone all sorts <laughs> <laughs> okay um right so uh, let's just say, let's bring that scratch reduction down. I don't think we need it like that aggressive. Um, so yeah, it's a good idea just to dial that in, see what works, maybe enhance face more or less. That's really a moment where you can play around, see what works, see what doesn't. And then once you're happy with the results, you can say, okay, in Photoshop, we'll go ahead and apply that filter. Now, you've ma you may have noticed I have applied that um, filter to the same layer. And I just wanted to, I, I did this to show you that you also have a second way to bring back or to dial those effects back by a bit by using the edit and fade, which now just, of course, doesn't work since I already deselected. My bad. Let's try that again. Photo restoration, processing, yes, please, thank you. And now let's try it again. There we go. Fade neural filters. Shouldn't have deselected that. That's why it, didn't, uh, why it disappeared. And now we can sort of do an undo, but with an opacity slider. So instead of doing com one complete step back and forth, we can go sort of halfway. And often that can be a good way to faithfully restore an image because let's not let's face it, this is an old image. I don't think we can ever bring it back to uh, like it was shot yesterday. We always know that this will be an old image. And for me personally, I do like to have a bit of that nostalgia look, maybe a bit of scratches. And instead of removing them, we can just reduce them by a bit to hopefully take out the major distractions, but still leave the look and feel um, of an image that has been taken quite a while ago. I think this was in nine. Yep, yeah, said it right there, 1962. So quite a while ago. All right. Now there are some limitations to that filter, and I would like to show them to you. Hopefully, in this demo, in the German stream, we had some issues. Hopefully, now it will work. This is <laughs> another photo. This time from a newspaper from my uncle, this, this is him, that's him on the right. And we notice that we have this classic half-tone filter. Well, a filter, back in, the, back in those <laughs> times, it wasn't a filter, it was just the way photos used to look, um, in, in newspapers, that is. Um, and if we crop that, and we have a look, we can see we have this half-tone effect. Certainly a nice look, but maybe we can reduce that. Um, look. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to see where this is going because I don't think I've I've seen this before. So if this is going to do what I think it's going to do, that's going to be quite special. Well, we... Hang on a second. Okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Because when I was looking at that photo, I thought like, hmm, I wonder if the neural filters could do, uh, could fix that. It was still, it's still at an angle. Yeah, I know, it's fine, so might. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> it's not like it matters. Um, so I went ahead and uh, went into the neural filters, went to photo restoration, but hopefully, yes. Yes, this time it works. Because, like I said, limitations. Photoshop doesn't always know what to do. 
it says we've temporarily disabled this filter because of an error. It doesn't really know what to do with this filter, uh, with the, with this halftone look. So how can we do? A, how can we possibly trick Photoshop into still processing that? Well, I did have an idea. This was quite experimental, but I thought yeah. let's try it anyway. Because what if we just blur the halftone away, not by much, just by yeah. about two pixels, right? And then we try the neural filter. Oh. And there we go. Oh. Huh. And of course, since we have a neural filter, maybe, and since it's recognizing the face, hopefully we can say enhance face and bring back some of the sharpness and detail in the face to hopefully reduce that effect again. I think, yes. Amazing. You are pulling out details that didn't exist. If we compare them, look, look at the teeth. I mean, that's a bit much, honestly. The, those <laughs> are maybe, uh, maybe we need to dial that back. But we can see, we can bring back some of the details which previously wasn't there. And also, there is, there is a slider, halftone artifacts reduction, but that one, of course, only works if you can apply the filter in the first place. Right? Amazing. So, have you tried any any further uh, like blurring to see if if that brings like have you found like the the balancing point of where you get the most amount of detail without you know you kind of just want to get it there where the dots sort of disappear and then you can go ahead for this one I went with one point eight pixels give or take um, I'm sure you can uh, tweak that and you can also use different blur filters. There's like a smart blur filter. You can try the um, interpolation filter. There are certainly different ways. I just went with the most basic one, the default one. Um, so yeah. And now we can go ahead and have some fun. And I, it's, for me, it was quite surprising what kind of detail we can uncover from a photo that used to be quite, um, quite low res. Remember those were all the dots. Mm. We've uh, we've had Emma join in the chat, um, and uh, <laughs> the mention here from Oliver saying, "Did you sense that uh, Tim was looking at a cycling photo?" <laughs> really, I mean, it's, like, it's crazy, right? It's amazing. It's almost like my great uncle was an avid cyclist. It's like, whoa, that is a cool photo. That I'm um, I'm loving that. I think that's him, but I don't know on this photo. Might not even one of them be one of them. I don't know. <laughs> but yes, I mean, he apparently he won uh, like a, a prize, second prize in the Munich something something bike race, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> wow. So, there you go. I mean, getting a, a a sharp image of cycling like that anyway is is difficult in today's terms because they you know they come by fast. Although that image it looked like they were going uphill, so maybe not that yeah. fast. Um, but getting that on film as well and all subjects in the frame. Um, yeah. yeah. So Props yeah. to the photographer, whoever that was. I don't know, probably family. <laughs> Someone in the family, I have no idea. Um, right, so we can see we went from this to this. And I think that's quite the difference. Mm. All right. Yeah, and we could awesome. colorize that. However, I do feel like that would take away from the image, so I will let that um, reside in the black and white realm of photos. I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. Right. There's, a, there's actually been chat of that um, happening of, you know, from a social historical perspective of you don't always want to no. you know, yeah. make the past um, as sharp as the future. Um, so, yeah, you, you kind of need to find your balance. Find your slider. Exactly. All right. So um, now let's have a look at a couple of other things that are new in Photoshop. So I will just take this image of this wonderful turtle, which we have seen before. And um, you know what always bothered me about this image? I mean, this is a lovely image, but the, the turtle, it's just, it has to go. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay. So let's use the object selection tool. And what's happening now is you can see up here, Photoshop is having a think. It's like, <sighs> and once it's done, we can just hover over objects in the image, like the background or the total itself, 
tap on that and use Shift Backspace to delete them straight away. Oh, what God. used to be a workflow of trying to select that like this and then using a tool and going like this and yes, content aware and okay. This has now been reduced to click, shift delete, done. That's wow. it. Really quick, really easy. And of course, I, we can go back. By the way, the difference between, um, like the shortcut is shift backspace. But it only will delete if you have the object selection to a selected. So if I have the object selection to select and I say shift backspace, it will remove it and also deselect, which mm. is quite cool. If I have a different tool selected. That appears to have done a better job yeah. than the selection and content aware fill. Yeah. What do we say? Yeah. If, it's, if it's running different. Different it might have processing. some different uh, preferences because you, uh, remember, if you actually go into the um, content aware workspace, you can select like structure and color and this. So it might have different true, settings yeah. based on the image, which mm -hmm. it may even do automatically. But under the hood, of, of course, it's still content aware fill. Mm -hmm. The good old content aware fill. And so, yeah, if you have the object selection tool selected and you do shift backspace, you get the instant delete. But if you have any different tool selected, like the lasso tool or the rectangle, you still get the old fill dialog. So that's not gone. It's still there. If you need it, it's the same shortcut. Right. Okay. Right. So cool. But what if, let's bring that back. What if we want a more colorful background? You know, the turtle is great. I always love the turtle. I never, I would never get rid of it. But I do want to replace the background with something more colorful, more abstract, more cool. And um, neural filters are here to help. So let's just, of course, I deselect the turtle. So let's just quickly select that one again. Mm, maybe even put a new layer. So we have that. And now I'm going to go into the filter, neural filters. And I will have a quick look at, where is it? Backdrop Creator. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a uh, pop band from the 90s. <laughs> 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 right. And uh, in here, we can uh, do some Adobe Sensei voodoo magic, and we can just type what we want. So maybe, I don't know, under... Water scene. I have no idea what's going to happen to this. So any suggestions mm -hmm. from the chat? Uh, mystery. Uh, blue. I don't know. Who knows what could happen? Now I'm just going to hit create and hopefully be pleasantly surprised by some cool, mm -hmm. or mostly abstract, however, uh, backdrops. Those are really great for um, like photos or even if you just need some abstract textures. And I think, ooh, have a look at that. That's quite cool. Ooh. I could generate more images based on this. We could also go more abstract. Let's say um, swirls. Is this Come is this AI generated or is this yes. a Adobe stock that is finding? Very uh, AI generated because I can type in that things that have never existed before. Uh, so well, it's it's colorful and um, confetti. I don't know. Let's just have a quick look at what Adobe Sensei will churn out. Again, I have no idea. <laughs> and the variety slider is just saying how different between each of those three previews? Yes, you can sort of like play around with that. I mean, honestly, um, it's really just a slider where you can test, see what you like and what you don't. Sometimes you get great results, other times not so much. So it's I usually just leave it somewhere in the high uh, up numbers. However, let's say yes, I really do like this one. I want more of this, and then it'll be sensible. Go ahead and create more images based on that. Um, I do actually like, however, the uh, underwater scenes. So maybe we will stick with them. Um, but yeah, once I found my favorite background, let's say we'll stick with this. I can say, okay. 
And now Photoshop will go ahead and put all of those uh, generated files into a new group. And I can still go with this one if I wanted to, but let's just say I'm going to stick with this. And there we have our very own new background, which of course, as always, we can use all our compositional tools to maybe blend that with the background. We could do like a layer mask. Um, let's just say I want to do like a gradient, so we hide the bottom and still have the top. I could just put it in, and that sort of brings us to the new gradient tool. Ooh, it's amazing. Oh, what it's a like segue. Thank you. <laughs> because back in the day, if you remember, you had to sort of drag and hope for the best. Hope that you have made the right choices in terms of color, because if you wanted to change it, well, tough luck. It's not going to happen. Um, you know, I'm, I was actually quite glad when they when they showed that at Max last week that, you know, you would drag a gradient and drop it and, and drag that. I realized that I wasn't alone in that point. Yeah. <laughs> For years, I've just thought, I just don't understand gradients, right? I'm just, I'm always doing this. Um, and there we go. However, this doesn't work on layer masks. It only works as a gradient filler, which of course, I mean, if you are clever, who's stopping you from just doing command A? Just pasting that into the layer mask? Eh? True, yeah. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, that's sort of a limitation at the moment. It only works on a new layer. So on this layer mask, doesn't work. It's still the old gradient, but that's all right because on this new layer, we can design our gradient, so to say, in any way, shape or form we like. So if we want to actually do it like this, or maybe we want to bias the gray to one side, or maybe we want to add like a new swatch, which we can do by hovering next to the line until the plus appears. And then we can double click on that to bring in color, like this nice blue, and then we can maybe bring in a darker color like this and yes there we go and if we want to take that away we can just drag it off the gradient like this and then it's gone but i would say about like here that's a lovely gradient and maybe we can use that as like a nice color overlay to color grade our wonderful composition using maybe blend mode, like something like soft light. Yes. Wonderful, just to darken the, uh, the ground a bit. And then we could scale that up. And suddenly... Got, uh, plenty of requests for, uh, for more gradient tools, um, freeform gradients in Photoshop and other cross-pollination from Illustrator. Yes, of course, we do have also other um, tools for gradients. We have the circular one, which now the, um, like this, we can have the um, spiral one, which the colors will then sit on the edge and you can move them around. We have the uh, mirrored gradient and of course our favorite lens flare gradient, hmm. which sort of produces a square one, which looks a bit like a lens flare. <laughs> so maybe we can do like something. There we go. Now it's a very bright gradient. Just put that. Oh, hello. Sorry. Gradient tool. Put that up here. Maybe a bit much. Anyway. Right. Those are the new gradient options. And they will Just be applied a quick as a one gradient. Here. Yes. Can these be applied with gradient maps or is that using the old gradient? Well, gradient maps are independent of um, placement of the gradient since they are defined by the color starting from um, black to white. You don't really have a place. They They're sort of exist based everywhere. on tone, aren't they? Yeah. Mm, and also, of course, for gradient maps, we always had the um, options in here. They are really just like the tool we have right now, you can see the similarities. You have like the bias between, you can select different colors. 
And I believe you can also, yeah, you can click and drag to remove it if you want to. Hmm. So yeah, that always has been there. Just gonna take that away again. And uh, reverse. And now we have this, I mean, rather interesting look uh, for this image, something which I certainly wasn't aiming for. Anyway, those are the new gradients. Now, that we have looked at the um, background and the gradients, let's also have a look at further inspirational options that we can use to bring in photos, materials, textures maybe, materials, ooh, into Photoshop. And specifically, which I already had open a moment ago, materials. There we go. Right. Mm. In here, this is the new panel, which, by the way, I am using the beta of Photoshop. Some features, like the new, the new gradient tool, they are only available in the beta. Other tools, like the materials panel, that's also available in the current version, the um, stable release of uh, Photoshop. So, yeah. And you should probably point out, if you wanted to get the beta, uh, just open up your Creative Cloud app, and on the bottom left, I believe it is, in the side panel. That's where you've got all the beta apps. Um, so they are publicly available. You just yes. in its own category. You might see something slightly different because I, of course, am logged in with my Corp account. So I do see some apps which you may not see, but Photoshop certainly is a public beta. So uh, you can give that a try. However, maybe not with your client critical uh, big mm -hmm. projects. I wouldn't maybe not open, perhaps not open them on the beta. I mean, it hasn't crashed on me so far, uh, but yeah, just in case, you know. I must admit, actually, yeah, the betas have been rather solid recently, yeah. um, which is good. Unlike Don't other jinx it. beta stuff, <laughs> very true. Um, yeah, beta is usually just like a, a hold your breath and open sort of situation. Yeah. Um, but they've been good. All right. Okay. And of course, Photoshop does have some minor new features like... The share button can now be turned off. That's no longer blue. Or the settings page has now some, um, like a search bar where you can search the settings. It's all great. But um, I feel like we should rather focus on the cool things such as materials. So I'm just going to dock that. No, there we go. That's it. All right. Here we are. And I would like to add some materials to um, this layer. And the way I do that is just really easy. I just click on material. Photoshop will go ahead and get that from uh, um, the substance library. I'm just going to turn that into normal so we can actually see what's going on. And we can see as soon as I click on one, it loads that um, material into Photoshop as a new layer, as a smart object, in fact, on um, like on a, on a smart filter. And actually, it, co it copied the gradient. That's actually what I don't want. So I will just create a new layer and try that again. And there we are. Now it's a blank one. And the nice thing about those materials is this is not just an image. They are all very complex, generated, uh, procedural generated images. So uh, you can modify those values. For example, concrete roughness. Would you like it to have more roughness or less? The scale of those, whatever those are, you can have a play around. And I feel like the best way to see that is to use maybe an example. So let's say I would like to create some text and fitting in the Say what you see. Turtle. <laughs> there you go. Color doesn't really matter, so let's put that up here and let's apply some materials because the nice thing about those fil uh, this filter is if you have some text perhaps or a mask, it will automatically clip uh, to that mask. So let's say I would like to use this material or maybe something that we can actually see. How about that gold? We can now, if we look have this wonderful, fantastic gold texture, which for my taste is a bit dark. 
So I would recommend just having a quick look over to the lighting um, tab where we can bring up the height of that source light and we can also control the direction from where it's coming from. From the top, from the side, from the bottom. I think we're going to stick with this and just tweak the height. Ooh, that's not bad. Yeah, nice. And we can play with the exposure. We can play with the color that's illuminating the um, gold in this case. And we can also play with the displacement, which just means how big is the difference between peaks and valleys of the materials. So if you have any bumps, how far are they protruding and how much are they catching the light? And you can use those materials to either just add some texture to your favorite, oh, well, that's nice. So add some texture to your favorite uh, text. You can also um, use that maybe for mock-ups. Let's say you have a poster that's hanging on a brick wall. You need a brick wall. Just download the material of a brick wall and there you go. The question is, um, we have quite, I, mean, I wouldn't say limited because it's still a lot, but we only have this amount of materials ready. So are that all the materials that Adobe has to offer? Well, certainly not. We can download more. We have two buttons that allow us to do that. One is the Adobe provided materials, the substance, and the other one is the Adobe community provided materials, indicated by this little community icon. Hi, Annika. No, we haven't saved. Um, so if I were to click on those buttons, up will pop a website, well not to Frame.io, that's for later, <laughs> but over here to Adobe Substance Assets. One for the um, normal quote-unquote assets, so I can go to Materials, and here we have well, just shy of 9,837 materials ready to use, let's say, oh yes, leather, certainly, or maybe paint, why not? And we can go in here, and have a quick scroll. I, I, I think you can see even just for paint. I mean, that's interesting. Hmm. For just more. as a, hmm. a reference, what sort of file size are these? Are we talking we, kilobytes or? Yes, I will actually talk about files in a moment because, I mean, might as well do it right now. Uh, what Photoshop needs or what the plugin needs to um, import is the SBSAR file. And you can see that pretty much all of them I haven't checked every single one, but I think all of them do provide that file. And you will need exactly that. Which means okay. you don't have to download it from Adobe websites. If you have a different file, maybe you've generated your very own one using the Substance tool, such as Substance yes, Designer yeah. and Painter. Um, you can certainly import that too. Just make sure that you have the SBSAR file, which I think stands for Substance AR something, something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, certainly for something. But as, as, uh, uh, as, soon, as long as you have that, you're good Sandrine to go. Sandrine is asking, can this work with capture created materials as well? You can create your own materials using capture and um, you might need to, oh, there you go, brick wall. You might need to check um, if you can import that format because like I said, at the moment, uh, Photoshop requires to have that specific format. And I'm sure the Substance apps can convert but you might just want to give that a try. I believe, but don't quote me on that, that all Creative Cloud subscribers have a one month free trial to the Substance Suite. Uh, might just want to double check that. Okay. Now, um, like you said, we can, or like I said, we can download those, um, those presets. Some of them are free, others, are not free. They, ha you, they require a subscription. Um, those are maybe separate depending on which subscription you already have. However, there's also the community side, which hosts assets made oh. by well, oh, the no. community. And in there, pretty much all of them are free. So that's good news. We can go ahead and like, oh yes, bricks. We can see there aren't as many but if you remember, you can customize all of them. So even just with this texture, you can really get like a whole host of different materials just out of one preset. 
And you can click on that. You can have a look, you can check that out. Well, same thing goes for this one. Let's say, yes, I do like this one. We can go ahead, see different presets, which are based on this one. You can see, ooh, that totally looks different. Fantastic, all right. Um, and again, we can see this one is available as an SPS AR. Fine, I think it also says it right here. Yep, there we go. And it's procedural. That means you get all the fancy sliders which you can use to customize your very own materials. So how do you import those materials? And how does that work? Well, it's very easy. You just click to download. It will process your request and put that into your downloads folder, which we can... I didn't want to open that. I just want to open the folder. Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> Sampler. Surprise Sampler Masterclass. No, that's not happening. Thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to open the downloads folder. Uh, there it is. Yep, thank you. <laughs> Interesting, all right. That's our material, apparently. But no, don't want to save okay. that. Not right now. Um, so let's have a quick look at the file size. Get info. So where is the file size? Oh yeah, there you go. About a couple of kilobytes. A couple hundred kilobytes. So not that bad, I would say. It's not huge. Yep. So if that answers your question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's import that. And this is done super duper easy by just clicking on the plus down here. Navigating to your favorite material. In this case, the Pearl Paint one, which we just download it and this will appear up here in the your materials tab you can see i already downloaded some others from the german stream earlier today and if i now click on that we'll see it will load that and now we have this wonderful almost looks like water waves if you ask me maybe Ooh, hello there we go maybe we can Customize that. Can change the color, maybe. I don't know. Um, all right, mustn't get into that too much because we have other things to talk about. Like plenty of customization, though. Yeah, certainly. Um, the thing is, you could just use those substance materials as nice textures. However, there are also some other materials available. If I just create a new layer. I use this very interesting one, which is from the damage library on Adobe. Substance materials, it's right, so not in the surfaces, under decals and damages. There you get all these. So that's interesting. That is right there. But maybe, just maybe, you could solo that layer, use a rectangle tool, Select that. <clears throat> Do a better job of selecting that, Tim. Thank you very much. Let's try that again. And create a new brush preset. Hmm. Interesting. Let's call that glass break brush. Okay. And suddenly, let's create a new layer. Use the brush tool. Deselect. Fill that with black. And... Ta -da -da -da. I could have optimized that, I just noticed. It's a tiny bit dark, but we can certainly fix that. But now, suddenly, you have your very own custom glass impact breakage single shot brush. And like all the other materials, you can still go in and customize that very material by going down here and maybe you want to change the size of the projectile hole. Maybe it's supposed to be a bit larger. And you will see now we just gonna put that on a black background so we can see what's happening. There we are, that's better. Um, projectile hole size, bring that down, maybe something smaller. And those are all procedurally generated, so you can really go in there and tweak that until you found your perfect impact. And um, maybe something like this, yes, and just tweak the contrast, or maybe not, maybe bring that down, more contrast, yes, lovely. 
and so on and so forth. And you can go in and you can tweak it and you can create a brush preset. And of course, if you want a colored brush preset, you would have to use a mixer brush, but that's a different story. And create completely custom effects. And this, of course, is not limited to um, glass, bullet impact, cracked effects. You can also use maybe some cracked dirt, some rust, and I'm pretty sure there are also some uh, foliage decals which you can use. Um, so yeah, all sorts of different um, fun things where you can play around, create your very own textures, maybe replace a texture. Who knows? Um, just uh, one thing to know: if you are using, if you are using a company license, an enterprise license, which is indicated by this up here, it says Corp. Um, that means you won't be able to use that account to log in to the Adobe Substance community assets. That won't work. You need a private account or single person account to um, log in and download from there. So if I were to try, which I'm not going to do, because I would certainly not try to log in on camera, <laughs> but if I were to do that, it would throw me a message like, hey, you can't use your enterprise license to um, get community assets. So I would have to log in with my personal address and then I could download them from there. Just so you know. Right. Okay. I think that um, should be everything I wanted to talk about in Photoshop. Let me just check my notes. Gradients, remove object, restoration, no of the background, substance, 3D materials. There we are. All right. That's Photoshop. <laughs> now let's go on over to my second favorite app, which of course is, say it with me, after effects. Uh, there you go. Right. Yes. Fantastic. Right. Okay. I wasn't <laughs> sure if you were just going to say bridge again. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my third favorite app. Um, uh -huh. Right. So after effects, so let's just close the Photoshop beta. No, Annika, this is for you. Don't save. Wow. He's a maniac, maniac. Okay. Um, after effects. That's where I wanted to go. And I get never I never get tired of opening After Effects live on stream. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, open. Ha <laughs> ha! Never gets old. Uh, <laughs> all right. And yeah. now let's create our very own new project. Ooh, sneaky, sneaky. That's for later. Let's just close that for now. We don't want to spoil anything. And let's create a new composition. -ition. Because if you remember to the 25 minutes we spent a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, I talked about how you can create new compositions using the new presets, which are finally up to date to modern standards such as full HD, social media, are well, fantastic. There used to be um, these ones down here, which, I mean, yeah, no. Yeah, no, I seem to remember... Uh, DV was quite often yeah. limit, uh, listed. Yeah. I mean, I haven't used a DV tape in <laughs> whoa, 12 years or so. So yeah, those are gone. Of course, you can still create your very own presets. You can customize that. Let's say you want to have 60 frames per second. You can create a new preset, but I'm quite happy with this one. So let's just say, yeah, give it a name. Let's call this one glowing poster. I wonder why I'm going to call it that way. It's just, who knows? All right. Okay. So we are now in After Effects. Yes. And I have found a couple of really cool stock footage elements on, well, it's but Adobe stock. And they are quite uh, flickery. So if you don't like flickering and fast moving colors and elements, maybe look away for the next half hour or so. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's quite... It's a thing. It's like when I saw that, I was like, yes, I have to use that <laughs> somehow. And it's good. It's get even more crazy. The colors like this, like, ooh, I mean, that's that's a thing. And as always, those are available for free on Adobe Stock. So if you like, you can just type in those numbers and you will find exactly those two pieces of footage. And now let's use those uh, three elements, these right here and bring them together in After Effects to create a double exposure-ish effect similar. Because double exposures in the past only have been possible for 
photos, single photos, but why not do it with video? <laughs> Amazing. Right, so let's do uh, that. I've just noticed my camera froze a couple of times. Oh no. Very awkward position as I just stretched my neck. <laughs> uh, I thought you were just interested. Like, hmm. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, cool. So let's start with this piece of footage. We re maybe remember that from one of the keying or how to move a background masterclasses. So I'm not going to talk too much about this right now. I'm just going to go into key. Quickly drag that filter on. If you want to learn how to use those filters, certainly be invited to watch those masterclass, uh, that masterclass by yours truly. And I will yeah, go into more details was, on that. That was actually a, a great stream. We had the, the turtle made a, a cameo again as well. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta reuse those assets. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you would like to learn more about that, how to remove spill and things like that, do feel free to check that out. But for now, I would just breathe through that and we would just take it as actually key cleaner does more harm than use. Let's get rid of that. It won't matter in the moment anyway, because we will be overlaying some very fast moving things. So nobody will care. Um, right. So I just removed the background really quickly. So now we have a transparent background just like this. Okay. I would like to now add the uh, dark background which is this just like here and i would like to have this more colorful one aka that one as an overlay but only on our subject so sort of like a clipping mask right okay so yep. let's take that put that at the very top and now let's use the new, new, new track mat uh, option. Because in the past, it used to be that you only could apply one track mat to one layer. So you always had to do a one by one pairing. If you wanted to have like more than one layer using the same source, well, that wasn't possible. You had to duplicate that or maybe pre-compose and I was like, ah, not very fun. Now... It had to be the parent layer as well, didn't it? Directly above it. Well, parent, that's sort of like a different thing again because parenting, True, that's parent. here. But yeah, yeah, they had to sit like right next to one another so you couldn't yeah. have more than one. If you were to change the direction and the, the order of the layers, it would all mess up. It's, it wasn't great. So Maybe now... If I was to anyone else, come back messy. <laughs> I'm delighted to say we can now finally create track mats which can be linked to any layer. So let's do that. Maybe. Either by using the pick whip, whoosh, like this, or maybe we don't want to do that. We can also just use the drop-down menu to um, pick our very well-named, I mean, I can just picture that based on that number. It's like, oh, yes, perfect. That's certainly the more colorful one. Um, we can pick our layers. So now this is maybe another glowing endorsement why you should name your layers. Oh, well. Right, so let's think about what we want to do. We would like to use this layer and sort of clip it to the um, one below, which is this one. In case you don't know, this is how you solo a layer by clicking on that dot. So, track mat, layer below, and done. Ooh, all right, first step finished. Now we have this sort of uh, re bit rem reminiscent of the Apple commercial silhouette ones, but of course, yeah, very different. So let's actually create our double exposure effect. And luckily, that's quite easy. We just have to apply a blending mode to our colorful layer to let the other one shine through. However, it's worth noting that After Effects very kindly already hidden has hidden the um, source layer of the mask because usually if you use something as a track mat, you don't want to see that certain thing in your footage. In this case, however, we do want to see it. So I'm going to bring that back because now I'm going I'm going to go into the um, modes and just use the add 
to bring back the um, original layer. And now you can see we have this very colorful overlay, but only over the um, person. And now we can go in and maybe add some tweaks because this is way too bright. We can say, I mean, this is, this is not new what I'm doing now. I'm just really playing around, <laughs> having some fun, maybe add some dark blue, bring down the highlights, add some color to those. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe not green, but I mean, yeah, we can maybe some pink. And then I'm gonna use maybe the curves to darken that just a bit. And add some contrast. Until, I don't know, this is. For those who are liking this, you will now say, ooh, wow, Tim is such a good designer. And for those who don't like this, uh, you will say, oh, that's why Tim is not a designer. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. Um, right. Anyway, I'm just really playing around with the colors. You can, of course, change also some blending modes, bring that back. But let's just say, yeah, certainly this is great. And since we call it this poster glow, I mean... I think Sean is in the chat, so let's add some glow to the overlay, because why not? And just bring the radius, and I think it's still too bright, so let's just bring that down. And really mess with the image, because we are designers and we can do whatever we want. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Surprisingly, you know, some of the styling is actually... Um is actually making its way quite commercial lately, believe it or not. Well, this is looking worse and worse. Maybe I have to jump back to my project, which I have made yesterday. It looked certainly better than this. <laughs> right. Okay. Now, I think what this is missing is some text. Certainly, I think you can all agree, because there's some suspicious space being left open up here. So why don't we add some text? And I'm not just messing around, I'm going with this to the next new feature or the next option of these track mats, which I wanted to talk about, which is, let's just, oh, no, use the text tool and just use glow, yes. Use white color and no stroke, thank you, Oops, let's try that again, no stroke, white color. There we go. Make sure to center and align. I said align. There we are. Missing more glow. I, th I know, I know, I know. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Dear. Uh, okay. And now, just gonna move that down here. Yes. And then go into the character, swap that and use the uh, CC Repertile effect on that text to expand that down. Yes, now we're getting really into graphic design. This is so modern. Oh, I can feel it. Yeah, and now watch this. We're going to just flip that. Ooh, now this is getting really, wow, that's amazing. Um, okay, <laughs> the reason why I'm doing this is I was thinking, hmm, uh, I've placed this text in front of this person. And if I were to actually put it right here, back in the day, this would mess up our whole tracking mat. Because mm -hmm. it, this, remember, this layer was linked to this one here. But now that we have the new way of linking objects, look, it just updated to the fourth layer in this case, and nothing is broken. Amazing. So we no longer have to be careful how and where we are moving text and objects. We can just go ahead, be free, move our text where we want. And I guess um, that makes the set mat effect kind of redundant now. Is the there... set mat effect does have some, by the way, if you don't know, the set mat effect was sort of the workaround we had, if we wanted to have more 
than one track mat or if we wanted to link different layers that weren't next to each other um, that does still have some uses however certainly a lot of them have been replaced now by the new track mat feature mm -hmm. and the second thing is because i of course didn't create the text just to create some text actually you do wanted to show something there are two ways to mask or mat um, layers one of them is the alpha mat which we just had a look at indicated by this sort of layers uh, mask icon. You see, alpha mat selected, says it right there. Um, there's also a second one, there's a luma mat, which instead of alpha is based on the brightness of a layer. And the best way to demonstrate that is to create a new layer, a new solid black add a gradient ramp to that. There we go, swap the colors. And now we can hide that. We actually don't need to see it, or even better, After Effects will hide it for us if we select both text. So we actually are using two layers to reference the same black solid. After Effects has hidden the effect for us. Perfect. And we can see they are now both linked to the first black solid. Now, of course, we don't want alpha mats because alpha just means where the layer is visible and that gradient, of course, is visible everywhere. We actually want to use luma. So just click on that and your layer mask icon will turn into a little sun, indicating that we are now using the luma mat. Amazing. And suddenly we can see where the gradient was white, the text is visible, where the gradient is uh, was dark, it's slowly fading away. So this is a really easy way for us to bring um, mats and apply them to more than one layer. Of course, we can also apply different effects to that layer. Let's say, I don't know, we can try the mosaic effect. And now we have this, and if we just make sure to scale it just right, we can hopefully fit it in a way that one pixel sort of exactly matches with the height of the text. Or if we don't want mosaics, we can also go uh, with something completely different. We can try maybe a turbulent uh, noise. Oh, mm, no turbulent displays, how about that? I'm just gonna bring that back. We can now roughen up the gradient, so to say, like this, and bring the size like here, complexity, there we are, and just get the contrast to really dial that in. There we go. And now, hopefully, we will see if I zoom in the text huh? yeah i think we can see that just about there it's sort of fading out and fading back in again so it's not very uniformly faded and i think if we were to yes. make that even more obvious by scaling that down we hopefully can see that well not as much as i was hoping we would see it maybe i'm doing something wrong i'm pretty sure i'm doing something wrong uh, but it should be there. Oh no, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it's still visible there. That one isn't. All right. Okay. Now, there's one more thing which I would like to talk about in the track maths, which is this button next to the um, toggle between Luma and Alpha Maths, which is the invert. We can invert maths. Um, so let's say we are duplicating that one and now we are inverting that. So now previously a black mat would have meant invisible and a white part would have meant it's fully opaque. Now it's the other way around. Now white means transparent and black means opaque. So we can use that maybe, let's say we go back into the characters and we can actually swap the color out for 
different one, maybe blue, and suddenly we can see it's sort of fading from white to blue because the filter like this, now we can see it's visible down here and fades out over there. Mm. And we can, I'm pretty sure we can play around with all sorts of different options, maybe play around with the stroke or see what works, see what doesn't. And now we can get really into designing our very own posters. And I'm sure you can all uh, agree that you have much better sense, uh, you have much better design abilities and senses than I have. But I'm honestly quite happy with the result we have right here. So, but I, but I, what, yeah, I, what I think is... Mention yeah. in the chat saying, it looks so simple, as long as I try it, you know? Yeah, that's, certainly. That's it. Um, I mean, Tim, you're making it very simple. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this project is quite simple, actually. It's not that much. It's just a couple of layers. But we can sort of elevate it to the next level because, as we all know, what this um, poster now needs, I mean, every good design poster, as we all know, needs a border, right? It's just a white border around that. That's very important. So uh, this segues nicely into the next um, thing I wanted to talk about, which are animation presets. And we talked about that in the Max session just very briefly. But for those who haven't tuned in to that session, I would just like to reiterate um, how you can get there because for the past 17 years, After Effects only had the same animation presets sitting up here. Nobody ever using them. But now after Adobe has asked a couple of artists to create some new ones and they are all here ready to be used. And as we also found out in that stream, it's quite tricky to see which ones are new and uh, yeah, because it's all text. So we learned that we can just go to the hamburger icon browse the presets and as long as we have adobe bridge yes bridge is back baby <laughs> as long as we have bridge installed it will open the presets for us and we can go ahead and maybe go to new text sure animate in and we can now see exactly what's oops sorry what is going on all the new ones we can sort by date so they all flow to the top we have used this one on the stream if you remember and um now we can just browse around maybe under shapes maybe under elements check out some of the new ones which are all highly customizable by the way that's nice nice 2d text box very nice doesn't have to be just a gray box with a white border. You can actually very much customize that. Um, super cool. Ooh, this, I mean, if that doesn't look like a very modern design poster, I don't know what. <laughs> I mean, that's a very trendy element. Also, this one's very cool. But I'm actually looking for um, something different. I'm looking for the comp border, which is right here. Oop, no, composition border. There we are. So just a double click will apply a new shape layer. And now, yes, indeed, we have a composition border. And now this, if this isn't a poster, I don't know what is. I am very uh, inclined to just print that or maybe put it on my Behance. And since this is a video, we can cheat and have a different poster for every day. Amazing. Um, but let's just say I am not a designer. Let's, let's just say it out. I'm going to put it out there. I am not a designer. So I do need feedback from you, hopefully. And, uh, well, here's my idea. I will render this out, put that on my uh, Dropbox, send you the link via email. Then you can download that file and you uh, make some notes, send me an email back with the time codes, hopefully. And then I will implement those feedback notes and then I will upload the new one, hopefully send the right link, send it back to you, and then you can go back and like, that's great, right? Can we do that right now? Got some render that out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see <laughs> you in two weeks then. To, uh, um, client feedback I have had that was line by line, every single frame that needed adjustments once. Oh dear. Well, we could do that, or maybe we can also go ahead and have a look at the new, new, new review. View, view. I'm gonna stop now. Um, 
interface, which I have hinted at at the beginning because I still had it open from the other stream. <laughs> and in here, we have the new frame IO panel because as we remember, Adobe has acquired frame IO a while ago. And now we are getting the fancy new panels and fancy new subscriptions because frame IO is now available for Creative Cloud subscribers, which means if I go back to my website, which I have conveniently opened right here, you can see you can sign in with Adobe and you get some benefits at no extra cost to your Creative Cloud subscription, such as you can have two Frame.io users, five concurrent projects. I mean, you can all read it, it says it right there. You have 100 gigabytes of cloud storage, which is certainly a lot because you don't have to export at full res if you don't want to. And you can also use the new camera to cloud feature, which I think deserves a stream on its own because that allows you, if you have the apps, to upload your footage directly from your phone to the cloud and have your editors using it straight away. Amazing. But we're gonna, not going to do that right now because I would like to focus on the review part of Frame.io. And if you have either a full all apps with all the bells and whistles Creative Cloud subscription, or if you have a Premiere Pro subscription, or if you have an After Effects subscription, or if you're a student and you have all the subscriptions, then you get this um, plan at no extra cost included in your Creative Cloud um, or After Effects or Premiere Pro subscription right in there. If you don't have that, there's also a free, completely free plan. However, that of course doesn't have that much storage and you might be also limited in some other options. And furthermore, there's also a more upgrade, more beefy, uh, an upgraded plan, which more uh, with more storage, more users, more projects, but that will cost extra. Right. Done a lot of talking. Let's do some showing. Let's actually do upload a thing. And I have already opened my panel. I have Oliver's already... just said, given I struggle to upload Instagram stories when I'm out with the camera, I'm not sure camera to cloud would be much use. Well, it says it, I think it said it right here, yeah. You do need some um, faster internet connections. Otherwise, yeah, it will take a while. <laughs> it's like you wouldn't want to do this in Germany. Let's see. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. So I have already created a test project, which you can do by just uh, saying a project. And now you can upload. First of all, you have to select your composition, upload, active comp. It will ask you some uh, options. First of all, give it a name, glowing poster. Fantastic. It will probably also ask me to save it in just a moment. Um, you can have a preset and this is also the moment where maybe if you have a slower connection, you can use like a lower bit rate. I'm just using five M bits. You can also go ahead and use like 40 or even um, lossless if you wanted to, but keep in mind that your cloud storage will fill up quite quickly if you use lossless. But for review, mostly um, like the lower ones certainly will be enough. We can change the settings. This is really equivalent to the um, encoding settings, which you may remember from Media Encoder or the Render Pipeline. Um, the range, work area, or whole composition work area just means if I just want to review a certain part, like maybe this one, I could only upload that. So I don't need to upload the whole thing. And... Um, where I want to render it, yep, sure, in the project directory, that's fine by me. If I want to keep the rendered file, if I want to use auto version, sure. And now, just going to cross my fingers because this didn't work in the German stream. I need to save. Thanks. And it's working. Okay, cool. <laughs> because for some reason, oh no, it failed. Oh, I used the same one. Hang on, let's just try that one again. I think I... Remove that. Oh, I changed the name. That might be the issue. Yeah, I changed the name. That wasn't a good idea. Oh, no. It's not working. <gasps> no, no output module template was found with a given name. Well, that's right here. That's, uh, okay. Let's try that one more time using a different... Well, let's just try that with the... It's really not liking me today. Oh, no. I 
I'm afraid I've, yes. I've not tested okay. this myself. This was the issue was I've used a preset which I think wasn't quite supported, which is because it was my own preset I made that. So that's why I probably didn't like it. It's all right. Things happen. This is how you know it's live. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So it has now uploaded that footage to the cloud. And I can go ahead and I can share that now with my fellow users and ask for feedback. Shall we dare to try that? Go for it. Oh, hang on. Let me just select that. Share for review. Yes. Copy link. Done. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, hey, there we are. All right, fantastic. We are now in the website. And by the way, if you were to um, copy that link, I'm not sure if I should encourage you to copy that link, mm -hmm. but just in case, there it is. <laughs> Be nice. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, I can now share this link with my reviewers. And they can go ahead and say like, ooh, yes, just going to play that. Fantastic. And right here. Use this as the thumbnail. And just add a nice rectangle we'll, we'll around. see if the chat from Behance will uh, drop over to Frame.io. If anyone's and just got the patience to type out the URL. An arrow. All right, and send. Now you can see I've replied to myself. Use this as the thumbnail. All right, so let's go back into After Effects. Yep, I'm done. Go right in. And we can see... Da, 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 da. There's this dot. Use this as the thumbnail. So if I were to click on that, you can see my current time indicator, my CTI, automatically moved to the right location. And I can see, uh-huh, yes. Uh, okay, I can use this as a thumbnail. Okay, fine, all right, thank you, Tim. I'm just gonna, oh, nope, sorry. There we are. Just gonna reply to that. Okay, thanks. Wow, I really like your taste in design. And you are so good at uploading footage. Amazing. Five stars. They had bongos. Fantastic. All right. Just going to put that right here. And now I'm actually going to get an email in just a moment notifying me that someone has left a comment, which in this case, I well, that was me, but thanks. Um, sure. And if I am happy with that comment, I can give it a thumbs up. I can resolve it. I can delete that comment maybe. And this is the perfect way for you to review and have a look at footage over the cloud without the other person needing to have a CC subscription at all. You can just uh, use an email, any email at all. And yeah, I think we can all agree this is much easier than having to share like a Google Drive link or whatever. Boop. Fantastic. Right. Okay. So now just a couple of other minor things which are new in After Effects, but still quite nice. Um, we can have color keyframes. So let's say I want to move. Oh, I just got that email. Yeah, frame IO. There you go. It's right there. <laughs> Thanks. Um, let's say I have the uh, person right here. I think that was this. No, that layer. There we are. I want to move that. So just P for position. Drag that all the way from here. Create a keyframe. Move that over to here. And now, yes, indeed, we can say, oop, hello. No, I don't want to double click. I want to right click. There we are. Label. And we can, oh, it's right behind the camera. I'm sorry. Uh, we can select a color like aqua, which, yes, that's clearly different from the gray one. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, perfect choice of colors. Thank you. Of course, you can customize that color. Or maybe you can use a different one, like, I don't know, red. Maybe that's a bit more. Yeah, there we are. That's different. Even better, you can also select keyframes based on color. So if you only wanted to uh, select all the red ones, you can do that. If you only want to select all the blue ones, maybe and move them. Super easy by just right clicking. I said by right clicking. There we go. And select keyframe label group. And then you can, of course, the camera's right in front of that again. Let's just move that up here. There we are. Um, then you can select them. Either all layers or just one layer, select layer, and so on. Really, really nice. All right. And finally, um, we can also export, and I know I've already talked about this in the um, uh, uh, in the 25 minute stream two weeks ago, but just would like to mention that again. We can also export finally MP4s again. So I'm just gonna add to render queue, and in here H264. There we are. So that means you can finally M export as an MP4 file once again without the use of media encoder. Uh, nice. Which also means, I've, as you maybe remember, I have exported this project, or I have uploaded that one as an MP4, and media encoder didn't, didn't open. Back in the day, if you wanted to export that as a, or if you want to use it as an MP4 file in FrameO, media encoder had to open. No, it doesn't. I see. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, the uh, I think the the colored keyframes uh, was like such a small mention in that, but it's actually very valuable. Yeah. Like just thinking, you don't necessarily have to name, um, you know, your your colors as such because you could use it as red could be, uh, you know, categorizing of movement keyframes, for example, and blue could be more of your scale. And I don't know. You the cool thing is, nobody says it has to be colors. Exactly. Let's say position, and for me, positions are always bright red. And of course, this is really just a label. <laughs> and some of the layers already were bright red, so well, there you go. But now, I, know, I don't want to double click that. I always double click. No, right click. Thank you. But now we can add the label position. Mm -hmm. And of course, this. We can apply the label position to anything we want, but um, this could be a cool way for you to organize, or maybe you can call it Steve, I don't know, <laughs> to organize your labels and maybe, maybe pick different ones than the default ones because I feel like brown, really? <laughs> Come on, we can do better than that. Or peach and sandstone, I mean, okay, fine. <laughs> Anyway, uh, right. So that's um, essentially all the major updates in After Effects. There are a couple of minor ones more, but I would rather like to use the last remaining few six minutes to talk about Premiere for just a moment. So, no, I don't want to say thank you very much. I certainly don't want to keep that. Thank you. And Bridge, I think thank you for your work, but we don't need you anymore. Let's go into Premiere Pro 2023. Just there a, we are. Uh, a mention in the chat of um, this feature being around for a while. So the colored labels has been around yes. for a long time, but it's colored keyframes that is uh, the specific new thing. Exactly. So the labels, yes, you were to able to label like um, the layers. That was previously possible, but the keyframes, that's the new thing. All right. Mm -hmm. So test, footage, yeah, whatever. By the way, new import dialogue, amazing. Look how smooth that is. Waka, waka, waka. Um, create. All right. And I would want to talk about two things. One of them, if I just quickly create a new composition. There we go. I had this test footage from Adobe Stock where I realized, although it's quite atmospheric, the um, the mist 
or the colors weren't quite right. So I would like, the, like to use the new auto color button, which if we um, go into the color workspace, select our clip and use auto. Adobe Sensei will think for a moment, <laughs> and there we go. Already applied some basic corrections. There we go, much better. And just because it says auto doesn't mean I can, can't also um, add my own ideas because, I mean, this is still quite hazy, so I would like to just crank down the blacks, maybe even the shadows and the contrast to really make it punch. Yeah, saturation, well, maybe not that much. And now I've used the, um, the auto button as a great starting point and tweaked those colors until I was happy. But like, it's, uh, but like you see, I didn't have to touch the temperature, tint, or the exposure one that was preset by um, Louis Sensei. Any idea when the color keyframes might arrive at Premiere? Um, good question. I could, if I had like a crystal ball, I could try to look into that, but I only have this glass, so let's see. Yeah. Ask again at next, Max. There you go. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I guess know. that's where uh, checking in every now and then on the, the beta version. That's of the where apps. the beta apps could come in handy. Hmm. All right. Uh, and likewise, you can give feedback directly from the app. There's a link on the top right to go right. And mention something. Okay. Furthermore, um, I would just quickly like to highlight the full screen playback mode, which now is super easy to present your work like this. And the way you do that is, of course, by using the conveniently keyed out part. No, hang on. There it is. Right there. Full screen button. There we go. Click on that. And you get a full screen preview. Great for presentations. And... Much easier than before. We had, I think you had to use the tilde key or double click. Control. The, and yeah, then, yeah. yeah. Like, control yeah. back tick. <laughs> Much easier now. All right. It's and always one of those ones where you, you forget and then you think like, it was this one? No, it's not that one. And then you get it on the second go. But yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look good when you're presenting in front of a client. You just want to go like exactly. full screen. I got you. Ta-da. And play back. Anyway. All right. Cool. Where oh, we only have a minute left. Hmm. Well, maybe then we will outsource this uh, this last part to a different stream, all about the new essential graphics panel. Because, oh, well, not, but not the new essential graphics panel, but the new features inside the essential graphics, which at least so we know where to find it. Uh, it should be in the editing. Essential graphics. There we go. There it is. And if we check out the edit tab, we can create new objects such as text, and we can use that text to mask out certain layers. So you can have like, you can add another layer to this and you can mask between them and create all sorts of different cool things, which you don't have time for. But I certainly recommend, if you can't wait for us to cover that, and if you want to learn more, Evan Abrams has done a fantastic series just last week on the Adobe Live channel, all about this essential graphics panel. How you can layer strokes, how you can mask images based on shapes using the new polygon tools. Uh, really, really cool. But I'm pretty sure we can also do a stream maybe sometime in the future all about Absolutely. essential graphics. And Stefan, yes, you're very welcome for the precise answer. I mean, you, you, I also don't know everything, believe it or not. Um, not every Photoshop and Premiere Pro engineer comes to me like, hey, Tim, what do you think about this new feature? Like, no, <laughs> it doesn't happen. So I also don't know everything. All right, but I think that is all the time. We have for today. I hope you have learned a couple of things, maybe got inspiration for some new projects 
or if, even if um, you don't like After Effects at all, maybe this is the point where you install it for the first time and just open and close it for a couple of times to appreciate the fast loading time. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, <laughs> and there you go, it's open now. <laughs> you know, sometimes I just sit around and that's all I do. Just, uh, oh, there we go. That's the old poster which I've made yesterday. Uh, deja vu, huh? <laughs> mm, that's amazing. I'm I'm waiting to spot this uh, outside a club somewhere, and this will be the the Friday night glow yeah. night. Look, definitely looks like a club poster. <laughs> it, it looks like I could post this to uh, Behance and get one thousand views in two minutes. It's, 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 wow! <laughs> cool. Then uh, I think we can just hide that real quick, conveniently behind this background, and I will hand it over to you for the outro. Absolutely. Yeah, well, uh, thank you, Tim, for joining. Uh, apologies once again for my uh, my camera not working and um, the uh, yeah data refresh rate potentially slowing down. I hope it's been uh, enjoyable and you can hear all clearly. Um, I've definitely been able to follow along, so at least your, your audio and everything has worked out brilliantly, Tim. So uh, thank yes. you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we will be back again, uh, yeah. not us personally, but Adobe Live will be back on Friday with Liz uh, going through some Adobe Express and of course we'll be back again next week Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday again. It's as if it's all repeated. As if <laughs> we have done this before with new and amazing streams. And now if you excuse me I'm just uh, going to go back and uh... this will make absolutely no sense for everyone except you Joe. Yep. <laughs> Well, good times were had in Munich. Some, Thank you some things you just do for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks for joining, everyone, and we'll catch you all super soon. See you around. Bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.